Hey, what is going on guys? Hey, what is going on guys? What is going on guys? Hey, what is going on guys? What's going on? I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos recently and I'm fairly concerned that I, hmm, I am fairly convinced that I have been doing the introductions wrong. Through my research, it's come to my attention that you're supposed to say, hey, what is going on guys? With no contractions um, and with a strange, vaguely Eastern European accent, <laughs> I'm convinced, I'm absolutely convinced that that alone is going to extend both the reach and the e efficacy, the effectiveness of my YouTube videos. <gasps> Holy cow! When did you do this? And I wanted it to feel more like home. What is the single most important lesson? What is the single most important lesson specifically left untaught or maybe more accurately not taught in design school? I think it requires a great degree of self-knowledge in your design practice to determine whether you fall into the beta or alpha predator ca categories. I've been thinking quite a bit about the single most important lesson not taught in design schools and the best way to communicate this. Is that right? It's a kind of inversion. I've been thinking about the best way to communicate this and I'd like you to call to mind a pyramidal structure. Look, I, I, I don't mean to be negative and you know I just want you to be happy and this is, this is amazing, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. But is a fire the best idea? The whole bookcase is, is made out of wood. It's not a real fire. I'd like you to call to mind a pyramidal structure. At the bottom of the pyramid, we find beta designers. These are the dutiful and diligent problem solvers faithfully toiling within the confines of the cube farm. The well-trained designer has an important role in the economic structure of the corporation. Solve problems, format information, virtue signal. Nearly everyone starts this way. It's just the way that it is. Young designers start at the bottom of the pyramid. Design education, schools, the agency, and the Western corporate structure all reward and enforce a certain type of behavior. It requires a great degree of self-knowledge in your design practice to determine whether you fall into the beta or alpha predator ca categories. And I think some people would interpret this video as being an excuse to think of themselves as alpha designers and kind of like, you know, like uh, fight the man when they're not actually um, quite ready to kind of uh, make that uh, strong stance. The lower strata, the lower 75th percentile is governed by a set of principles. The cube farm itself so the economic structure of most design firms and agencies, as well as the educational apparatus, the schools, enforce, are set up to enforce a set of principles. Chief among those principles are first, appropriateness, and second, transparency. What does this mean? In a nutshell, it means that design solutions must be appropriate and they must not primarily be about the designer. They have to serve the program, the interests of the corporation, the client. I came over here and I made Elliot put me in this light. And here is where justifiably you can accuse me of being master of the obvious. A design solution must not primarily be about the designer, but rather be about the interests and program of the client. Ah, but we're early in our story. Yeah, I see you're wearing the t-shirt. I told you nobody would know. It's kind of dope, isn't it? Hey, I, I've been hearing you working on your music a lot, and I, I had an idea. I thought maybe what we could do is start a SoundCloud page for you and release some of your music, maybe. Maybe try and build an audience. I don't think anybody else would like it. At the top of this design culture pyramid, we find alpha designers. An alpha designer is anyone who has established a public profile for their work. 
But the fact is that designers whose work you know, regardless of the way that work looks, in most instances don't abide by the set of rules that is taught in schools and that is enforced in the cube farm. As a matter of fact, the rules are inverted at the top of the pyramid. The personality, the hand, the signature of the alpha designer is present in a way that violates the principle of transparency. In, in school, you're taught to downplay your personality. Your personality is not supposed to be present in the work. You're supposed to be a tool, a kind of instrument for the client or the person that you're working for. What we really find, though, is um, a kind of paradox. We find at the top of the pyramid, we find with nearly any designer whose work you're familiar with, we find quite the opposite. This is what we will confusingly refer to as the principle of design principle inversion. Now, it doesn't matter specifically whether the work is conservative or it's um, conservative might not be the right term, whether the work is minimalist or whether the work is complex. Really what you find uh, with designers whose work you know is you find a kind of flagrant display of their point of view or personality through the work. Now you can use different language to describe that, the hand of the designer, the artist, but the real point is that many of the rules that are taught and many of the rules that are enforced inside of design firms and agencies are inverted uh, at the highest levels. At the top of the pyramid, the rules are inverted. They're the opposite of what is taught. I think it's important. I think you'll be a lot happier if you start to get your music out in front of people. You know, also, I spoke to a designer about you. I don't even know what they would do for me. I mean, I, I have my own style and I do my own work. I don't even want to do it. No, oh, don't be like that. Can you please? You know I recognize and really appreciate everything that you've been doing for me around the studio, all the paintings and everything. I recognize your genius. I think you're amazingly, amazingly creative, but that doesn't mean that you can't collaborate with people. This kid is getting kind of famous, you know, and I thought maybe I asked him to do a kind of portrait for you. He, he's a designer, so it's not like, it's nothing that you would think. But I thought it might help out with uh, if we, if we do a SoundCloud page for you, it help, might help build an audience. I just want you to keep an open mind. I want you to consider, I want you to consider going with me to see him, all right? Please. I'm gonna make my music under the name H.R. Snuff and Dunk, AKA Little Thing, AKA Maxi Dunk. The problem is, as a young designer, when you begin to exhibit these types of behaviors, the types of behaviors that are prevalent at the top of the pyramid, you place yourself in career jeopardy. I was talking about how there's, uh, there's danger in, the, in mounting the steps of the pyramid and ascending within those ranks. As an example, I was, I was fired from uh, both to Herrick and Poole and Associates uh, very early in my career when I was 23. And then after I got out of graduate school, I was fired from... Electra Records, and I, in, there's one way of looking at it which would state that I'm, I was just an idiot, am an idiot, and was an idiot, and therefore uh, deserved to be fired. But when I think about it in retrospect, I think that part of it, oh, a big part of it, was the idea that my, my, the, the fundamental, the fundamental, my fundamental conception of, of uh, what the role of the graphic designer was really differed from what the economic model, what, what the the way that the, the, design firm, uh, the design firms and the, the agency, the, the record company was structured. So, you know, I felt as if that, um, that uh, design should be, should be uh, a kind of different, different animal. So the point being that as I made attempts to, uh, 
to enact those behaviors, I found myself at odds with um, with uh, with the corporation. There is peril in mounting and ascending within that pyramid. In the lower levels of the cube farm, these behaviors are forbidden. H.R. Snuff and Dunk, AKA Lil Dink, AKA Maxi Dunk. You know, sometimes I think the Lil names are kind of played out. You know, but in this case, in this case, I think it might be appropriate. So I'll talk to the designer about it. If he can work with those names, I'll think about it. I'll consider it. I understand why you'd like a tree and grass and, and a fire and everything, but I don't know. Why do you have a tire on the wall? What's that thing? It's a portal. <laughs> portal? Come on. Really? It's a portal to a multi-dimensional universe. This is a graphic designer. His name is Brendan. Chasing the tangle. I told you I wanted you to work with somebody that was kind of hot, you know. But Brendan was recently profiled in this magazine called Graphic Design USA. Where they asked him a bunch of questions, stuff like his favorite fictional or his historical character that he identifies with. He said Pepper Ann. His favorite movie, of course, was Pretty in Pink. Favorite TV, Binge Watch, Roseanne. Favorite type of music, Stevie Nicks. I thought the best part was favorite social media platform, VampireFreaks.com. His last book he read, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom. A mantra or saying that he lives by, he said, chase the tingle. When you work with a designer, it's really important to work with somebody that is smarter than you, you know, in that specific area. And I know we talked about how you got your own thing going on, you want to do your own thing. I get it, dude, and how creative you are. But Brendan, I think, is going to bring something to the table that I think you're really going Chasing to like. Chasing the tingle. Okay. And he did an illustration for you. Appreciate you doing the, uh, doing the illustration of, of Reggie. He... He's been really um, working on his music really hard, and he's been upset for a while. So it really means a lot to us. I, 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 um, I know we, we talked about not exchanging money, and so this is this is one of my prints in exchange for the for the beautiful work that you've done. I, I want to, okay. Reggie. I want to show you what uh, what what Brendan's done for you. So I showed the monograph for Gerhard Nodell and uh, uh, that yellow book. That's a fairly traditional uh, piece of design. But I think it still has a strong hand in it. And you can think about a designer whose work I really love, Abbott Miller or, or Michael Beirut as an example. And I think that they would never, I don't know, but I think that they would never, uh, they might not agree with my central thesis, but I can see a very strong point of view and a very strong hand in both of their work. Uh, and their work doesn't look like mine. So I'm not suggesting, I'm not suggesting that work needs to look uh, wild. The personality, the hand, the signature of the alpha designer is present in a way that violates the principle of transparency. What do you think of that, buddy? What do you think of that? <laughs> you excited? <laughs> you excited? So how was, what, what, uh, what were you thinking about when you did that? Oh, you didn't tell me I had to do this. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I know exactly what Brendan Lovejoy was thinking about when he designed Reggie's uh, picture, which was the Lindsay Lohan reality TV show. We were watching um, Lindsay Lohan's new beach reality TV show set in Mykonos that you would think would be a lot of fun, but it sure isn't. It's a hard watch. But it was actually really <laughs> difficult to watch. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> what did you just do? I don't know. I know this isn't gonna he work because you don't have any idea how do technology you wanna, works. Do you want to? Do you? Yeah, yeah, you can.
<laughs> oh, you know what I was doing? You know what I was doing? This is a good shot. <laughs> Chasing the tingle. It's okay. Did you get that? What I think you're talking about is the fact that commonly in graphic design, we think that nothing can absolve the relationship or the subservience of the graphic designer to the capital C client. And once you enter that rarefied air, the rules change and um, become something that is actually quite disobedient to mainstream graphic design. After w one has watched this video and extrapolated this information, what, your, what would your advice be to designers who want to jump from beta to alpha? There's an arrogance in a, um, in, uh, inherent in the video, and that's really not what I'm referring to. I'm not suggesting that the people, that people who are dutifully, uh, you know, dutifully working and solving problems are inherently um, inherently bad. Um, it's more a question of whether you want to to uh, rule the cube farm or whether you're whether you're content uh, content working in the cube farm. Click on click on the images above to watch more videos from this channel. And if you enjoyed this video. I ask you to do one thing, subscribe and share. No, it's two things.